So let's get away from the bad mojo coming off that penalty box and, you know, have some fun. Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Ms. Mojo. Today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Ted Lasso quotes on Ted Lasso. Feels different, coach. I mean the same, but different. Metaphor? You know it, baby. Now, you might be wondering, why did I draw all that up there? Just to erase it. And that is because I believe in symbolic gestures. You beating yourself up is like Woody Allen playing the clarinet. I don't want to hear it, all right? So just, you know, knock it off. Go easy on yourself, okay? For this list, we're looking at the most heartwarming and inspirational quotes spoken by everyone's favorite mustachioed football coach. Since we are discussing plot details to give context to these quotes, a spoiler alert is necessary. So what other Ted Lasso quotes make your heart feel like a palace of crystals? Let us know in the comments. All right, let's get into it. Number 10. Success is not about the wins and losses. It's established early on how selfless Ted Lasso is, and this is one quality that helps him win people over. Oh, no, I know Trent. Yeah, he's a tough cookie. Ready? Yeah, but that's okay. You know what you do with tough cookies, don't you? No. Dip them in milk. <laughs> not long into Ted's tenure as the Richmond coach, Trent Krim, the tough-as-nails reporter for The Independent, is commissioned to write an up-close-and-personal profile on him. Do you feel it sends the right message, having a party after a loss? Well, Trent, I've never really concerned myself too much with wins and losses. Now that's a quote I'll probably use. The two have an eventful day, culminating in a super spicy supper at an Indian restaurant. Krim thinks it's irresponsible of Ted to coach a sport he knows nothing about. But Ted assures him, in between fire breaths, that success means something different to him. Me? I love coaching. Now, I'm going to say this again, just so you didn't think it was a mistake the first time I said it. For me, success is not about the wins and losses. It's about helping these young fellas be the best versions of themselves on and off the field. It's a moment that changes Krim's perception of Ted and assures us, the audience, that the first step in achieving our goals is being our truest selves. And it ain't always easy, Trent, but neither is growing up without someone believing in you. Number nine, they need to believe in themselves. I do love a locker room. It smells like potential. And am I getting notes of Axe body spray? One of the major themes of the show is the power of belief, whether that be in oneself or in the collective strength of a team. It is so central to Ted Lasso that it literally hangs over the door of his office. When team owner Rebecca gives Ted a tour of the club, she shows him an old picture of the stadium, adding that people claim to still see ghosts from that era. Yeah, some of the locals claim they still see fallen soldiers wandering around the pitch. Ooh, that's spooky. Oh, do you believe in ghosts, Ted? Mm, I do. But more importantly, I think they need to believe in themselves. Yeah. Ted's response proves that a belief in one's own potential is far more important than anyone else's validation. This he later points out to Nate when he's insecure about the strategy he suggests. Tricky time hearing folks that don't believe in themselves, so I'm going to ask you real quick again. Do you think this idea will work? Yeah, I do. Whoa! Why are you screaming at us, Nate? We're right here! And even though that belief may be crooked, all that matters is that it exists. Number 8. Rom Communism I'm sorry, Roy, but I came here tonight because when you realize you want to spend the rest of your life coaching with somebody, you want the rest of your life to begin ASAP. Please don't. You complete our team. You're an asshole. Well into the second season of the show, the Richmond team is still struggling, mostly due to a lack of effective leadership. Ted makes the team re-watch their recent loss, hoping that they'll be able to learn from their mistakes, but this only results in them pointing fingers at each other. Never the speechmaker, Ted informs the team of his new worldview. If all those attractive people with their amazing apartments and interesting jobs, usually in some creative field, can go through some lighthearted struggles and still end up happy, then so can we. It's a beautiful reminder to always stay positive even in difficult times, because more often than not, things tend to fall just in the right place. Gentlemen, believing in rom-communism is all about believing that everything's gonna work out in the end. Your rom-com may have a slightly different ending than you imagined, but just like my best friend's wedding, sometimes it's for the best. Hello, coach. I'm really glad you decided. Shut up. Just shut up. You had me a coach. Number 7. The Wisdom of Age Easy, easy, easy now. Coach, tell these boys what the first rule of my fight club is. No fight club! No fight club. One of the most prominent conflicts on the show is one that's as old as time itself. 
The conflict between the young, super striker Jamie Tart, and old, midfielder later turned assistant coach Roy Kent. During the charity auction, Ted puts both players at the same table in a bid to mend their fences. Well, hey, you don't need to be best friends to be great teammates. Think about Shaq and Kobe, right? Lennon and McCartney. Heck, even Woody and Buzz got under each other's plastic. Wasn't Woody made out of cloth? Yeah, I appreciate your neighbor, now's not the time. Yeah. You know what all those dynamic duos had in common? Mutual respect. This initially doesn't go well, until Ted points out to Roy that he was once young and arrogant just like Jamie. You know how they say that youth is wasted on the young? Well, I say don't let the wisdom of age be wasted on you. All he does is plant a seed of mentorship in Roy's head and watches it germinate. We're all a lot more similar than we think, even with people we do not like. And while we may not agree on everything, we can at least be respectful of each other. I just came up with that. I feel pretty good about it. Number six, taking on a challenge. On the surface, the premise of Ted Lasso is simple. A fish out of water coach travels across the world to take on a job he has zero knowledge and experience for. Classic comedy trope. But it's also much more complex than that, and nothing more perfectly encapsulates that complexity than this. Are we nuts for doing this? Yeah, this is nuts. Hey, but taking on a challenge is a lot like riding a horse, isn't it? If you're comfortable while you're doing it, you're probably doing it wrong. While on the plane with Coach Beard as they head overseas, Ted notes that stepping out of one's comfort zone can be quite scary, littered with enough stress and anxiety to fill two internets. How about I go ahead and address the larger than average elephant in the room? No, I have never coached the sport that you folks call football. At any level? Jesus. Um, <laughs> and heck, you could fill two internets with what I don't know about football. <laughs> but sometimes a little stress is what we need to perform at our very best. Ted lets his vulnerability shine through every step of the way in his new job and is a great example to emulate because only when we're vulnerable are we able to find our true voice. Going out to the pitch, yeah. the grass here, to watch practice. Training, they call practice training. Oh, it's vernacular, it won't be tough. You know what, I'm gonna get it though, because uh, training makes perfect. There you go. Number five, things that make you cry. Season two starts on a pretty tragic note. Danny Rojas takes a penalty kick during a game and accidentally hits the Richmond mascot Earl, sending it to dog heaven. At a press conference afterwards, Trent Krim, the independent, asks Ted about the unfortunate incident. Well, when I was three years old, I got attacked by our neighbor's dog. I don't remember it happening, but my mother said it was pretty, pretty scary. I do remember being afraid of dogs while growing up, though. Rather than pull out a clever response from his bank of eternally optimistic responses, Ted proceeds to tell a moving story. Then in high school, our neighbor, Mr. Grady, well, his, his wife passed away. And he was real sad about that, as you can imagine. And he just kind of stopped taking care of their dog. Same one that bit me about being terrified of dogs after getting attacked by a neighbor's, but later loving and caring for that same dog before sadly having to put it down. It's funny to think about the things in your life that can make you cry just knowing that they existed can then become the same thing that make you cry knowing that they're now gone. Dealing with the loss of a loved one is always traumatic, but Ted acknowledges that their presence in our lives certainly helps us grow. I think those things come into our lives helps get from one place to a better one. Number four, being alone and being sad. And I want you to be grateful that you're going through this sad moment with all these other folks. The first season of Ted Lasso takes the Richmond team on a roller coaster of events, capping off with a last minute pass by former teammate Jamie Tart and rival club Manchester City in their final game of the season. Naturally, the team is crushed. The faces of the devastated players and fans likely mirror those of the audience. We may not have won, but y'all definitely succeeded. Ted walks into the downtrodden locker room and reminds the players how important it is that they have each other to lean on in this collective moment of sadness. Because I promise you, there is something worse out there than being sad, and that is being alone and being sad. Ain't nobody in this room alone. It's a powerful message about teamwork and recognizing that a team should function as such in times of celebration and in times of loss. Number three, be curious, not judgmental. In what is arguably one of the best scenes of the entire show, Ted agrees to a game of darts with Rupert, proposing that if Rupert loses, he will forfeit his seat in the owner's box. 
Rupert takes him up on this, oblivious of how seasoned a dart player Ted is. Oh, wait a second. I forgot I'm left-handed. Oh. I was gonna be a hoot. Although initially losing, Ted recounts this rather impressive story about a Walt Whitman quote he once saw painted on a wall. You know, Rupert, guys have underestimated me my entire life. And for years, I never understood why. It used to really bother me. But then one day, I was driving my little boy to school, and I saw this quote by Walt Whitman. It was painted on the wall there. It said, be curious, not judgmental. I like that. This made him realize that the guys who underestimated him made wrong assumptions instead of actually getting to know him. Because if they were curious, they would ask questions. You know? Questions like, have you played a lot of darts, Ted? <laughs> Which I would have answered, yes, sir. He then hits a bullseye and wins the game. Curiosity may kill the cat, but the satisfaction of knowledge will always bring it back. Number two, change can be scary. Fellas, we're broken. We need to change. And look, I know change can be scary. One minute, you're playing freeze tag out there at recess with all your buddies. Next thing you know, you're getting zits, your voice gets low. The fifth episode of season one sees Ted having to make two difficult but important decisions about his career and his marriage. On the pitch, Jamie remains as arrogant and self-centered as ever, to the detriment of his teammates. This leads Ted to make a highly controversial decision to substitute him right before halftime, even after scoring both goals for the team. In the locker room, Ted highlights to his players how important it is to embrace change in order to make progress. Most of the time, change is a good thing. I think that's what it's all about, embracing change. Being brave. His decision pays off as Richmond wins the match without Jamie. Ted also realizes he needs to embrace the change in his marriage and eventually makes the painful yet admirable decision to let Michelle go. I promised myself I would never quit anything in my life. But you're not quitting, Ted. You're just letting me go. Ted is known for both his folksy idioms and his incredibly inspirational sayings. So what do you think is at number one? Well, make a few guesses while we list off some honorable mentions, and then we will name our top Ted Lasso quote. One Piece. Metaphor might be Ted's middle name. Now listen, you two knuckleheads have split our locker room in half. And when it comes to locker rooms, I like them just like my mother's bathing suits. I only want to see them in one piece, you hear? Believe in believe. Ted Lasso believes in miracles. I disagree, you know? I think it's the lack of hope that comes and gets you. See, I believe in hope. I believe in belief. All people are different people. Don't judge books with similar covers. Do you remember what you said when I got dumped by that cruise ship dancer and swore I would never date another dancer again? Can I have your tap shoes? All people are different people. Mm. I said that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's pretty good. Girl, listen. Thank you for coming to our TED Listen. Rule number one. Even though it's called girl talk, sometimes it needs to be more like girl, listen. Got it, learn on the fly here. Come on, hit me. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Now ring a bell, Nate. That ring a very large bell in your head. Number one, be a goldfish. One of the surprising stars on Ted Lasso is the young right back from Nigeria, Sam Obasanya. I had my name. The player from the Nigerian Football League has trouble fitting in with his new teammates, a newcomer in a foreign land, much like Ted himself. Well, we know you haven't been home in a while, so we thought we'd bring some home to you. How are you guys, man? Is she? Is she gone? After getting shown up by Jamie during a training session, Ted awkwardly tells Sam not to let mistakes weigh him down and to let them all go, just like a goldfish. You know what the happiest animal on earth is? It's a goldfish. You know why? No. It's got a 10-second memory. 
be a goldfish, Sam. Once Sam is able to do this, he fits right in with the rest of the team, eventually rising to become one of the top scorers and a pretty influential player, gaining his team's support on his Dubai Air protest. Ted even calls back to his goldfish advice in the first season finale after the team's devastating loss. Let's be sad now, let's be sad together, and then we can be a gosh darn goldfish. Onward, forward. Ted is so wise, isn't he? Honestly, every time I watch the show, I have so many feelings, and they run the gamut. I'm either beaming or crying, honestly. Anyway, which piece of Ted Lasso advice do you live by? Let us know in the comments, or come tell me on Twitter or Instagram at Rebecca Brayton or on my YouTube channel. See ya.